This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Lonely people shouldn't get in relationships. And if you ask me, this is one of my least controversial opinions. Uh, right, guys? What? No, not at all. This is terrible. Exactly, I know I'm right. In order to help me prove my point, let me take it back to the loneliest time for most of us in our lives. Um, first year psychology. So you ever heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs? It's a chart that ranks, well, the human needs. At the bottom are the essentials for not dying, like food, drink, shelter, a sleep. We need those to like live and whatnot. And then above that, it's safety and security and stability and freedom from fear, which sounds more practical than it is. And then after that, the thing a lot of people might be missing and the point of this video, connections, friendship, acceptance, and probably the most unique between all of these is a need for love. Cue the awns. Which I, I like to point out here, means not being lonely is a key we need to not die. It's a solid theory, I think. I mean, according to this chart, you need this intimacy more than you need good self-esteem. Hear that, guys? Getting a girlfriend is more important than being happy with you see in the mirror. I always knew, I always knew. But sometimes it feels like that because of how strong that desire of wanting not to be lonely is. So because we need it so much, is there a chance we need it like, like too much? Like to the point where it could be detrimental to us? Well, obviously the answer is yes. So let me tell you why I shouldn't, why lonely people shouldn't get in relationships. By telling you a story about a certain girl. All right, let me, let me pause real quick because there's something I gotta explain about why this story is different from every other story I've ever told on this channel. Okay, just listen for a second. So, see, according to the 10 Kurt Ritchie channel commandments, right under video must make me look bad. One rule I always try to fall under is that don't make videos about my deep personal life until that arc of my life is over. Or at least I think it is. It's not on the table to talk about to 160,000 people. And what I'm about to talk about now on some anime stuff has been my Dio. Right, we thought we got him in the first part and then it was chill for part two and then he came back and we got him again. No, and then he came back again. That's a, no, this is a freezer. Came back three times and then like I got a, then he came back again and talking. All right, this has been going on for five years. And and now I'm fairly sure I finally defeated my freezer. Probably. And this is one of the many, many, many lessons I learned from this relationship. So. Don't think we'll be done with this. There's a lot I want to get into about how this hurt me and changed me completely. So I can't wait to take this pain and monetize it for money. I was right, so back in high school, maybe towards the middle endish of my senior year. On paper, things were going surprisingly my way. I was the best high jumper in the state, which was just relevant enough to get me recruited for D1 track to half pay for college. My genetics kicked in and I no longer looked like someone's right foot. And I had people around me who moderately liked me. But despite all these good things, in reality, uh, things were way less breezy in uh, the old noggin there. I mean, I was happy I was being recruited for college, but my dream school uh, offered me essentially a Domino's coupon for a scholarship, so I wasn't gonna go there. I had some health stuff going on at the time that was freaking me out. I didn't help. Everything around me felt fake. I don't, and I don't know, life was just poor. I was depressed, actually clinically depressed. Like I went to a doctor and they said, you're sad and threw some pills at me. That's that's how sad I was. I just felt like that I was missing something, specifically that third tier on the hierarchy, that intimate connection. Uh, more specifically, a girlfriend, because that's what fixes depression, kids. So what do you do when you're sad and you feel like you don't have anything? You try to meet strangers on the internet. <laughs> of course, who? So you have the time and an effort to kind of make that connection. I download this app called Quad, which is basically like Discord, but instead of a game or a YouTuber server, um, it's your colleges. And there you can meet other people going to your school, uh, make friends, it, it was a solid app. So I'm on the app for like like a couple days and it's actually a pretty good time of meeting people, but you know, that's not meeting wifey yet. Like, I'm really pushing this agenda. And, and I remember one day I was just casually scrolling and then I saw a new person get an account on there. Someone that definitely caught my eye. Unfortunately, not only is she kind of cute, but she has a great smile. She looks fun. I turn on stalker mode and check out her profile. And that's when I knew this had to be a sign. Oddly enough, is getting recruited for the track team just like I am. So naturally, your boy slid in her DMs and we started talking and things instantly clicked. And by clicked, I mean, she was talking to me and I was happy about it. So that's 
what the clicking was is that the conversation was happening wifey materials uh must breathe and speak english and you don't even need to do that one to be honest <laughs> it was just, i finally had someone to talk to even though i was like really sad it was nice to have someone to connect with she was there for me and i clung on to that like a leech on a thigh and that sadness kind of made me really lean into that so i you know elevated things a lot. We got each other's numbers, uh, started texting, then calling, uh, then FaceTiming, then meeting in person. Everything went super fast. Like, like a week. That all happened like in like a week. <laughs> and I know that sounds a little rushed, but I mean, come on. It felt great to finally have something, you know? I mean, because I was sad at the time. And again, it was someone who was there for me. And I appreciated that. Granted, that someone was not conventionally what I usually go for. Not like from different looks or whatever, but, but like different like personality type. You know when you meet someone and you're not necessarily on the same wavelength? It's like you're a taco, pretty tasty, a little crunchy, a little spicy, not that appealing when wet. And then they hate food metaphors. It, it's something like that. Or those months I saw just the kind of wild party person who loved going out and talking to people, which is something on this channel I've actively, um, put down when it came to handling problems she was more passionate she wanted to yell and scream and i wanted to like not do that she was a bit more on the naive side of things if i now that i think about it the only thing we really had in common that we both watched anime and we're both on the track team oh and we were both black. But i think much of it you know because you know obviously opposites attract that phrase is a phrase for a reason phrases can't be wrong and again i always came back to this all this stuff didn't matter because despite the the lack of cohesion between you two you felt a lot less lonely and that's what really mattered and as time went on we started dating in college and, and things were great Oh, wait, I read that wrong. Uh, and things were awful. See, like before, before college, I wouldn't have noticed anything because I was greatly, greatly depressed. But once college started, I got happier. Happiness was the problem. This is a first. See, you don't, this sounds wrong, but here, let me explain. I got happier, not necessarily because of her, but because of college. All these problems started to go away. My health issue kind of cleared up. I started liking the college I went to. That was definitely a, a shocker. And I found a lot more new friends on the track team and in my classes. So my problems kind of resolved. And so did my sadness. Well, my sadness kind of went away. My rose petal glasses look of our relationship. Yeah, things weren't really that great. <laughs> the worst of all, and the thing that kind of hurt the most, I don't think I really love this girl. I love that she helped me feel less lonely and that it felt like I had a connection, but the connection wasn't a good one. It was some real sprint type stuff. So when my happiness came up, the connection, I saw it for what it was, like a terrible, terrible plan. That's way more expensive than it should be. And I ended up being involved with someone that <laughs> really wasn't a good match for me because I was sad and lonely. And I know what to do. How do you handle this kind of situation? I ended up talking to her about it because I mean, she, I owed her an explanation. And obviously, uh, guess what? She felt the same. Apparently I was filling some holes for her too. Uh, not like that. I mean, if we don't match personality wise, it makes sense that both people like feel like that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the thing with Maslow's hierarchy needs is that with any of these, you're willing to get it if you don't have it. That's the point is that it's a need, you need it, which can lead to problems. I mean, let's just take the first level, right? Uh, drink, if you run around the forest for days, you ain't got nothing to drink, it's barren and you're and dying. You know what sounds like a really good idea? Drinking your own pee, like it's either die or drink your own pee. And in this situation, I think drink your own pee is like sounding really nice and sweet right now. And if you're in a deprived state, you're gonna want anything. And this goes for a situation when you're lonely. It's almost a rubber band effect. You're so lonely that you'll grab onto anything, even if it's not right for you. And those things contextualize the state that you're in. And I wish I did. And we ended up breaking up at the end of the year. Well, loneliness is something I still dealt with after that relationship and still do now. Sometimes it's hard to not just lean into anything and contextualize a relationship to know if it, yo, is she actually a good fit for me or do I just want a girlfriend <laughs> and just rush into things. But things that helped me have been one, friends, having been able to have people to talk to about regular things and, and be fine with it. Uh, two, self-worth, understanding that you're okay to be by yourself. And that's probably the best time to get in a relationship is when there's no issues to have on your end. Cause then you're not dragging some person through your own personal problems just so you can feel whole, even though it's easier said than done. And three, something that's helped me a lot is putting all that energy into other things. 
uh, specifically your passions. Like for me, I love making YouTube videos and something to help fight the loneliness, oh God, this sounds bad, is making videos about loneliness. <laughs> and the videos were terrible, they were bad. <laughs> like my editing was like really bad and my writing was like really bad. It was cause I like only had me to teach me, like I was doing studying computer science. So I didn't really have any actual help. So, and that's why I really wanted to talk about this video sponsor, Skillshare, because I really wish I had that at the time when I was like really feeling down and wanted to throw myself into my passions, as opposed to the alternative when you're lonely, um, a train. Y'all should make that the tagline. Skillshare, throw yourself into learning, not trains. Skillshare, <laughs> okay. I don't, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk about Skillshare now. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators that has over 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. If you get yourself that dope premium membership, it gives you unlimited access to a ton of knowledge that you can learn at your own pace during your time. Not to mention, you don't have to do things like take out massive loans like I did for college with Skillshare because it has an annual subscription that's less than 10 bucks a month. Whether you wanna fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning all on your own. If you're like me post breakup to fill the loneliness void and want to learn how to edit, do what I wish I could have did and check out Jordy from Cinecon's tutorial on Premiere Pro editing. Or if you're like me now and want to learn how to be a more funny haha -ha black man on the internet, check out Humor Writing, Write Funny for the Internet by Mike Latcher, who's a haha -ha funny white man who I'm planning on filling in the blanks for. So if you want to check all that out, click my link in the description and get two months free of Skillshare, which I think is pretty good. Not one, but two months, like come on. So you want to learn how to make videos, learn to write, learn how to create, and take that loneliness into something constructive, and just make sure to click that link in the description and head on over and join more than 7 million creators learning with Skillshare. What's up, y'all? Thank y'all for watching that very, very, very tiring video. I'm here in New York uh, with U-Tunes and Mads. If you liked that video, I highly suggest checking out my previous one about liking video game girls is like really questionable. And saying it in front of people makes me feel even worse about it. So go watch that. He's a terrible person. Yeah. If you can't tell, I'm in the Get in the Robot studio right now with a weird hat. And that's because I'm here for Anime NYC, which is literally tomorrow. Come to our panel, please, Saturday at from 2.30 to 3.30. I'm gonna change it if the time's wrong. Please come out, see me. We can shake hands and talk about whatever. Thank y'all for watching and we're out. <laughs> <laughs>